Hi, I'm Bill Corcoran Jr. This is the On The Stacks Podcast. Oh yeah, whoa, look, they can never keep me down, I'm going, and if I ever fail to snow, I'll go again. I never quit, because I know that every loss may lead to another win, I'm going up. You went all yeah. over the world. Yes. You did Cra- a bunch yeah, of different crashed things. Crashed vans, yes. bought cigarettes, illegal alien. And now what are you doing? I talk to myself in my room. <laughs> what I do. Today, I'm chatting with Dave Thackera, voice artist and owner at Thack Voice. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Here at On The Stacks, we know the importance of using the right tools to deliver smooth results. Designed for performance, safety, and comfort, Manscaped is the complete package when it comes to men's below-the-waist grooming and care. The Lawnmower 4.0 is equipped with skin-safe technology, which helps reduce the risk of nicks and cuts so it's gentle enough on your most precious jewels. And because it's waterproof, you can trim the hedges come rain or shine. Not only does Manscaped have the finest trimming technology, but they also offer a full lineup of hygiene products to keep your boys dry and fresh all day long. When I find myself in a hairy situation and it's my balls on the line, I only trust Manscaped, and you should too. And that's why Manscaped is offering all On The Stacks listeners 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com when you use code STACKS20 at checkout. Again, that's manscaped.com to get 20% off plus free shipping. This episode is brought to you by Burn, the fitness company behind the Today Show approved Burn Board. If I'm being honest, working out can be a real chore, especially as a new dad in desperate need of sleep and cardio. Burn is founded by NEPA native Jimmy T. Martin, and his burn board offers a low-impact core and cardio experience unlike anything I've done before. They have hundreds of on-demand workouts that are great for beginners, seasoned athletes, and out-of-shape podcast hosts who love supporting small businesses. My wife and I use it pretty frequently throughout the week, and it's honestly a great way to burn a ton of calories without burning a ton of cash. Not to mention, it's a great tool for skiers, runners, wrestlers, and hockey players. Jimmy is offering all On The Stacks listeners 15% off when they use the code STACKS15. Visit theburn.com today to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15 at checkout. Again, that's theburn, T-H-E-B-R-R-N.com to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15. It's time to get on board today with Burn. This episode is brought to you by Blue Door Financial. Blue Door Financial will help you save money and reduce taxes to live a fuller financial life. To learn more, visit Blue Door Financial online at bludoorfinancial.com. That's bludoorfinancial.com. What's up, podcast episode 103 of the On The Stacks podcast in the Blue Door studio. Dave, welcome to the show. Hi. This is awesome. This is fun to be on this side. You know what? Yeah. So um, I got to formally introduce you even though people already heard an introduction of you. But a lot of people have always asked, um, you know, specifically, you know, about parts of the show and other, I have other podcasters, other podcast hosts that actually listen to the show. And um, I've never formally, I don't think ever introduced you of, of the guy that edits the show. I am what you hear what you hear because of me. That's right. Bill has a lot to do with it, but I have, not I all. have nothing to do with it. <laughs> I just sit here and look ugly, and Dave, the voice, makes me sound pretty. Well, the editor. You're yeah. the voice, your guest is the voice, I am the editor. But it's it's fun to be able to hear the episodes before they come out. Yeah, you do, that's right. And to change things around and... and yeah, and just ma- make the show however you want to make yeah. it, you know? So if there's ever a bad question that makes it into an episode, if there's ever a bad response, if your guests smack their lips too much... Blame it on me. I'm fine with that. It's totally fine. It's Dave's it's fault. It's not your fault. It's my fault. Yeah. So out of all the things that I do to make this show go on, editing the show is not one of them. And um, I feel like a lot of people know that, but a lot of people don't know that. So shout out to Dave for making me sound amazing and my guests every week. And now you're a guest. It's it's an interesting juxtaposition, but here yeah. we are, and I'm I, excited. Yeah, yeah, good. So so, but before again, before we go on, it you know I know like I said, the other podcast uh, hosts do listen to my show. So if mm-hmm. if anyone is in need of service of Dave's, I mean you know how awesome my show sounds. So this is Dave's commercial that's still going on, but I'm okay with it because I appreciate Dave and the amazing work he does. Well, thank you. Yeah, seriously, and, and this is like 
this is like for you. I think this is you, you've been you've been with me for like more than uh, more than half the show. We've done dozens of episodes. I don't Way know more. exactly yeah. when I came on board. I think it's like something like sixties, and now we're at ep- yeah, you episode came in, you one hundred three. Yeah, you came in in, in the sixties. Yeah. I think like sixty two to be exact. Okay. Maybe, sure. Maybe Sounds 63. About right. Yeah. So, but anyway, Dave's been with me a long time. So I've taken so. a lot of Bill's money. Pretty much. Yeah. I'm, and I will take more of Bill's money. Yes. Which is absolutely fine. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a discount on this episode. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> no. Because oh, I know how many uh, mistakes damn. I'm going to make. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be more work for yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, no, it's, it's cool. I'm really glad to have you here and uh, learn a little bit more about you and what you do. So where does the Dave story begin? Um, I was born in Wilkes-Barre and here I am. I mean, my, my story is so long and twisted and convoluted. I like that. I don't know where to start. So we're going to have to jump in somewhere in the middle. So when were you born? I was born in, I'm fine. I'm 1981. I'm okay. 40 years old. Uh, I think I just celebrated, depending on when this episode comes out, just okay. celebrated my 41st birthday. Okay, yeah. If we're talking in the future, I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I have no problem with, I mean, you can see how much gray is in my beard. I don't care. Long life is a gift to me. So, like, give me all the big numbers. I don't care about yeah. telling people how old I am. So, all right. So, if you turn 40, mm-hmm. what happened in the last 40 years? <laughs> <laughs> so much. Um, basically, I, I, I swear to you, I'm not trying to make this difficult, but I have I have this list in front of me. All right. It's a list of dozens of things, and this list is all of the jobs that I've had throughout my life. Now, I'm not talking yeah. about like the one time I valet parked cars for a party or something like that. You I didn't just, list those? I didn't list Why jobs not? like that. Because the list is long enough as it is. <laughs> it is. It's pretty long. Right. It's so long. All right. I, so, so give me like, give me like one or two or three on there that like were, you know, you're maybe a, a really fun job, a favorite job, so maybe something you learned a lot from. All right. So probably the, the, the main crux of my career revolves around exactly what we're doing right now, which is sitting in front of a microphone and talking about nothing in particular based on subject matter that is, you know, of interest to me because most of my career was spent in radio. So if you recognize my voice now, it's because at some point before 2013, I was on Rock 107 for about, God, 15 years in one way, shape, and form. So what did you do there? Um, I started out as an intern in high school before they realized that was probably stupid and illegal to have a high schooler not only in the building, but driving the company vehicle. <laughs> <It's better laughs> nice. Right. I was the last high school intern they had because the f- literally... What did you do, crash it? The first thing I did on my first day as an intern for Rock 107 was drive a van, which I had never driven anything larger than like my mom's Saturn before. Okay. Drive the company van through a narrow alleyway behind the Times building in Scranton. Scrape the <laughs> hell out of the side of the van. I was that, joking when I said you crashed the no, van. First thing that I did. All right. So and you, that a Rock was 107 actually... Van. On the way to buy the pro- uh, the promotions director at the time a pack of cigarettes. I was 17. Oh my my goodness. first thing that I did ever in my professional like big boy career was cause damage to company property in the form of scratch in the van on the side of a, a yellow post and to commit a crime, <laughs> go buy cigarettes for somebody that worked there. Like the, I love this. This is how I started working by Dave, breaking I, things I, and breaking the law. I love where this episode is going. Right. This is this is a phenomenal start. I'm glad to be able to tell that story now that the statute of limitations has run out. This, so is, this a, is fun. This is absolutely amazing. Right. Cra- crash the van, buying cigarettes. <laughs> so that's what I did for like the start of my career. I was an intern and it's just like hang out, here's a job, go do a job. We after a concert are passing out bumper stickers. Like in early two thousands radio, like that was awesome. And it was a great way to just get experience in like hanging around people. I mean, the funny part was that, like, my parents, great, wonderful parents, wonderful upbringing, no complaints about that. But they were a little bit nervous with, like, who are you hanging out with? Where are you going to be? You know, typical stuff. Yeah, what, what van you driving? The moment that I started working for the radio station, they really didn't care. They're like, eh, he'll figure it out. It'll be fine. My group of friends in high school, not exactly straight edge, but, like, we didn't really drink. We just like hanging out and laughing and making each other, you know, laugh, playing guitar badly. Like that, that was my group of friends. Playing in high guitar school. badly. Yes. Do you play guitar? I do. Badly. I actually bought a new one today. Did my you? most expensive guitar ever. Oh my we'll God. get to that later. All right. But my group of friends was like these, li- not nerds, but nerds. Come on. Yeah. It, it, it was fine. Um, 
But as soon as I started hanging out for the radio station, my parents didn't really care about what time I got in. My dad would wait up, but like I never got the where were you, what were you doing? I was at work at a concert handing out bumper stickers surrounded by people that were drunk and high. So it was kind of ironic that they <laughs> cared before. Then they put me in front of chemically intoxicated people. <clears throat> and it was like, and that's yeah. when they stopped caring. But I, you know, again, figured it out. I think it turned out all right. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're still a work in progress. We're still working on that. So that unpaid internship led into a paid part-time job that I did through most of college, still at the same radio station. So like if there was a car dealership radio remote, I was the one lugging all the gear, setting up the podium, setting up the broadcast, bringing you, you know, Lou Fontaine live from Dixon City Hyundai, which was a fun job because it was easy to work around college hours, college schedule to do these things on, you know, after hours and on the weekends. That led to somebody calling off sick someday. And it was a classic rock radio station, which I knew inside and out, going back to playing guitar badly, like loved Led Zeppelin, knew everything about Led Zeppelin. Here, go talk on the radio about Led Zeppelin and don't curse. That was the instructions. Okay. Is this when you were still in high school? Or no, this at like this right point after? I was in college. Okay. Like high school had come and gone, but I was still like a freshman in college. <laughs> and I went to King's, um, went uh, worked at their radio station, WRKC, still going strong, love them. But I spent more time for an actual commercial radio station than I ever did in the college radio station, which to me was fine, but it's not how people usually do it. They usually do all the college things and then go to work for somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking about radio stations, um, I think if I remember correctly, one of the first episodes I think when you discovered my show was, mm-hmm. uh, was Rocky from KRZ. That's the reason I started listening to the On The Stacks podcast because okay. Rocky posted and I, Rocky Rhodes is not only a local legend, he's one of the greatest guys out there and he's just highly entertaining no, no matter what. He is a I legend. I love Rocky. He's Me too. He's the best. Um, but I heard he was going to be on your show and I'm like, oh, I'll listen to the Rocky Rhodes episode yeah. of a podcast. I don't care what they're talking about. I don't know who the host is, but this seems fun. Yeah. So yeah, that's how I started. I found your episode. A couple episodes later, you had a girl that I went to high school with on. Um, That was Amy and Sarah from the Northeastern Vision Institute. So like within a couple of episodes, you had a couple of people that I knew and liked and respected on. And that's when I started listening to the podcast. Yeah. Awesome. And now here we are. (laughs) Yeah. Fast forward. And then I wrote to you and they're like, how can I take his money? Yeah. Which by the way, like I have to say, the way that you approached it, I I really, I, I liked it. You know, because it was, um, you know, like I get, I get a lot of people trying to sell me stuff all the time, as ever, as everyone probably does. Mm. And I don't mean from like a podcast standpoint, just like in general, like, right? Like on LinkedIn, especially nowadays, you know. And I get like sales pitch after sales pitch every day, and uh, yours was nice. <laughs> well, again, I wasn't selling you anything. Yeah, I was no, offering I mean. you a service. Yeah, exactly. You were, you were offering help, right? You know, and um, it was kind of like right place, right time kind of thing. And I was like, you know what? I don't know. I don't know who this guy is, but he's a local dude. And at the time, I think I was using somebody out of town for the mm-hmm. for the editing. And I'm like, this is this could be a win win. Well, I've got two kids. They're seven. They're four. They're both in private school. They are wonderful people. But I'm never going to turn down an opportunity to make money on their behalf because they like to do things like you know eat and have toys, yeah, and play <laughs> games, and play games and go places. <laughs> so if I can hustle on the side and make a couple extra bucks on their behalf, that's what I'm going to do. And I, again. I wrote to you with the, I don't know who your guy is. It's fine. It's good. But if you're thinking about changing, let me know. And that's basically how we how we met. And yeah, and here we are, like 60 some episodes later. <laughs> it's about well, time I had you on the show. But the best part about editing your podcast is that I can do it at any time. It's not like it's, I need it by five o'clock today. You yeah. give me a long lead time and I, I try to beat it, but yeah. you know. You crush it. If I'm... If I'm upstairs in the studio editing a podcast at 11:30 at night, you know, it so it, wor- it. it works. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so crashing vans, <laughs> DJing, <laughs> radio, what happened after? Uh, so you were at Rock 107 for a long time. I was at Rock 107 um again, both on and off air for about 12, 13 years. Maybe 15 if cuz I went away for a year. I did my final semester of college abroad in England. Oh, wow. Then I, didn't I know came that. home. Yeah. What was that like? Incredible. I loved 
loved, loved every minute of it. It was, it was a transition point in my life, which is a theme that I'm sure we will revisit at some point in our conversation. Definitely. Um, I was in radio long enough to realize that there was really no money in it. And if you want like the big career or the something that's going to last in radio, you have to move across the country like six or seven times. Like you got to start in Anchorage and then go to Louisville and work your way up from market 112 to market 70 to market, you know, 50. And I just, I'm, it's not that I was against that. But I really didn't want to move all over the country and start over every two years. It's not really my style. Um, so once I realized that, then I'm like, well, maybe I don't want to do radio after all. So then I thought to myself, well, what am I doing in college? What am I doing in college? I have no idea. And my favorite professor at the time, her name is uh, Melissa Scroy, now Dr. Melissa Scroy. She's the head of the comm department of Misericordia. Um, she was my writing teacher. And... For whatever reason, one of the assignments that we had, and I remember this one vividly, we had to write, it was a magazine article writing class, and we had to write some sort of movie review in a magazine style. And I know you're of a certain age where this movie probably won't resonate with you, but- I'm not that much younger than you, but go ahead. Give me give me a shot here. Okay. So again, I'm in college, I'm writing a movie review of the last movie that I saw, and it was Memento on DVD. Okay. Yeah, you stumped me. Exactly. Yeah. So the, Sorry. <laughs> Memento the movie is about Guy Pierce. You know Guy Pierce. Guy Pierce is a guy with short-term memory loss. So the whole movie is this really disjointed, you're figuring it out as he's figuring it out kind of thing, and it, it'll like go on for 10 minutes, and then it'll flash back to... That doesn't make any sense. But then they'll have an, a scene from like chronologically a week before that. And that'll give you a clue to make sense. So the whole movie is like this giant like mind screw of what is happening? Who are these people and why are the guns firing? Right. So I'm like, oh, this would be cool to write about. How am I going to write about it? And I wrote the review backwards. Now, most smart people at that point, if they realized they wanted to do that, would have written the review and then just literally copied and pasted paragraph 12 to the beginning and vice versa. I didn't do that. I wrote the review backwards. It's easy to start writing if you have an idea. I wrote from the end all the way backwards to the beginning and I submitted it with like paragraph would start with 12, 10, 9, 11, 10, 9, 8. So that when my professor was reading it for the first time, she didn't know what was going on which was the whole point of the movie. And if you're experiencing that, and so anyway, she praised me up it. and down yeah, for okay. it. And she's like, this is incredible. You should be a writer. And I'm like, that's not radio. I should be a writer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now now we got Dave the writer. Right. So now writing was my my passion. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write the great American novel. And I'm going to be like the Dave Barry of newspaper columns. But whatever it is, I'm going to write. So... Going into the later years of college, I'm like, I'm writing focus. So when I got to the opportunity to study abroad my last semester, my job was as an assistant editor or an editorial intern or whatever at this group of magazines in London, in downtown. So they, did they have vans there? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hard enough time driving in, in our country. I'm yeah, not going to do that over there. Scratching up the vans. Yeah. No. Thankfully, All right. mercifully, Whew, no. Thank God. Took the tube, took the buses. Three months in London was outstanding. Met some incredibly wonderful people. Got to live in what is now currently priced at a like million five flat right in the middle of the city. Wow. It's it was it was awesome. If anyone's listening and they're young and they have the opportunity to spend a semester abroad, don't think about it, do it. Like make it work. Um so now I'm an editorial intern there. I come home. I have two weeks to do nothing because my work is done. Everyone else is in finals. Okay. Sucks for you guys. <laughs> I'll meet you after you're done. Graduate. Um, and now I have to find a job. Now what am I going to do? Well, I had already worked through college in addition to radio part-time at Orlowski's on Kidder Street. It's now a Unimart. You know, the one right across yeah, from yeah, TGI yeah. Fridays. Yep. Yep. Making subs, doing Unimart things. Doing Unimart things. I like that. <laughs> Not a... Not a lot of intensive mental effort went into that job on my part, yeah. but you know. So I'm like, I got to make some bucks. I already know the management staff up there. Can I have a job? Sure. Come back. 
So I went to a different store, but searching for work, I wrote to my bosses in England. I'm like, are you guys hiring? Yeah. Can I have the job? You're going to move here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so then I moved. I, I worked for like another month to save up enough for a plane ticket and found a place to stay. That's why you moved to, You moved there? Moved to England Fresh out of college, knowing nobody with no real promise, but I had a job. Okay. So like, right. so you know, you're going places. I show up at the airport. They're like, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm working here. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> the hell you are. <laughs> Where's your papers? What papers? What do you mean? So I was uh, detained for were... quite a few hours at Seriously? Heathrow Airport. No way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is why 2003, because I said, I want to come and live in your country. Where are your papers? I don't have any. Oh, okay. So you could see how that would be a little bit of a kerfuffle at the border. This guy's trying to sneak in. Right. Um, So (laughs) there was... This is going well. This is... Yeah. Again, (laughs) in retrospect, maybe I should have asked more questions (laughs) before buying the plane ticket. Right. Um, But in the... 10 or so hours that I was at the airport, my parents managed to find my birth certificate. The company managed to fill out the forms and get them in front of somebody who signed off on it somewhere. So I was dirty and tired and exhausted, but they let me in and I was able to go there. This is after somebody told me, by the way, like, well, you're going to be on the next plane back to America, get it straightened out and then come back. Well, as it turns out, they let me in. I was able to stay there from, this was late August of 2003. And what they didn't tell me when the company hired me was that the woman who hired me didn't know that the company was like going to go out of business. Oh, no. So I show up on, let's say, August 10th. That seems about right. On September 12th, the company went out of business. No way. I was there Stop for like it. six weeks. <laughs> no. Now I'm like, now what do I do? I'm, I have no experience. I have no resume to speak of. I just <laughs> came out of college from a... I have no connections here except did they the give, people... Did they give you like any like... Like, hey, Dave, we're going to close up in two weeks or a month? Or was it just like, hey... Um, on th- Thursday, there was a big staff meeting. On Friday, it was our last day in the office with a nice party. On Friday night, we went to the pub across the street and consumed in misery with each other. And then we all went our separate ways. Wow. And the really, really awful part was that like every job that at that point I was qualified for, all of these people were trying to find and get the exact same job. And they didn't need work papers and they had more experience and they had connections. So I tried for as long as I could, basically until my landlord's patience ran out of the, you're going to find a job trying. Well, so by Thanksgiving, I was back here in the States, which it sucked. But in retrospect, it's where I was supposed to be anyway. Yeah. So well, may, may also made for a cool story. Made for a great story, because especially when I found out (laughs) at the end of it, as I was getting to Heathrow again to fly home, (laughs) I had been instructed, apparently, in that 10 hours that I was detained to be on the next plane home. Not like, yeah, you're going to be on the next plane home. It's like, no, you will be on the next plane home. So I was, there's no other way to put it, I was an illegal alien for a couple of months and living in their country very much illegally. Wow. Was not supposed to be there. A rebel. In a post 9-11 world. So as I tried to get on the plane to go home, that was that was another incident security experience of mine. But again, they let me home. I was, my dad picked me up at the airport. He's like, well, how was it? I'm like, not good, dad. <laughs> not good at all. <laughs> yeah, it didn't, didn't work out. Glad to be home where I have papers here. Um, so yeah, I, I've been an illegal alien in my life, which is wow. not something that everyone can say. Wow, that's pretty cool. So then I came home and I needed to take the first job that came along because I'm drowning in debt at this point. Like my American Express card was on fire. They had a hitman out for you. Yeah. Um, so I took the first job that came along in radio again, because why not? Rock 107 was hiring. One of their guys just quit. So now I'm doing the overnight shift and I'm producing the morning show and my hours are midnight to 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. And that's how I spent, you know, most of my early 20s working with the Daniels and Webster morning show. If you were of age at a certain time, like that resonates with you, your audience probably skews a little younger, might not mean anything to you, but like it's kind of a big deal. Um, And that's where I worked for eight years before at that station, like nobody ever quits for long. 
if you quit, you, then you come back quickly. There's not a whole lot of turnover, which is fine. That's what you want your radio stations to be, but there is not really a lot of advancement opportunity. Um, but then the afternoon guy quit, and I'm like, I want afternoons. So then I started working the afternoon show, and then that didn't work out because they brought in somebody else to do this or that. And then I moved to nights, and then voice track nights and production. Like at that point, it got really sketchy really fast because I kind of didn't want to be there. You got the feeling that the management turnover didn't really want me there. Um, but then apparently I had a fan in the building, someone. I'm, I'm not sure who. I'm grateful at this point. But this is about 2009. And they're like, well, why don't we just make him the morning show with this other guy, Eric? So instead of firing me, they actually promoted me to the biggest part of any radio station the morning show nice which was <laughs> okay in, the, in in my estimation a horrible mistake on their part <laughs> but that was a fun three months or excuse me that was a fun three years i love eric the prospector he's an amazing guy he's incredibly talented at the time that i got promoted and got the morning show like within that same three-week window i got married this was in the works before that clearly um, but I went from not being married at all to kind of being married twice because being, you know, half of a morning show, it's definitely a partnership that is very much, you know, life changing. And that was a good three years. And it was, we tried, I guess I dragged the ship down for one reason or another. And eventually they got rid of me. I think they were still mad about that van. Probably. It, it was probably a long con on their part. <laughs> I think so. Like. You know what we should do? We should keep him around for 13 years, pay him yeah. money to yeah. work here, and then we should fire him. I think so. Again, now I'm 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 in that situation that nobody wants to be in where you really don't know what your next move is going to be. I'm married now. We have a dog, we have a house, so there's more than just, well maybe I can pack up and move to Louisville and be on the radio again. No, I got to find something around here. Didn't really have many, you know, options at that point i knew that i was going to get out of radio so and I'm, I'm really sorry to everyone listening right now who's like why is this guy just telling us about his career because i've had many careers and this is we're, we're telling my story um <laughs> Eric, but yeah keep going i knew i was getting out of radio so i had applied to um i, I thought to myself i kind of want to teach you know i was working simultaneously in my last couple of years at rock 107 at Misericordia. So my morning shift would end. I'd be home by about like noon, one o'clock. And then the professor that I referred to earlier in the episode, Melissa Scroy, she's the head at Misericordia. She's like, I need this guy to, you know, supervise my student workers for our media library and to teach a couple of practicum classes. And that came along at the perfect time. It rejuvenated like my professional drive. And I'm like, I want to teach at a university level. What do I need to do this? I so need, Dave reinvents himself again. Reinvents myself again. I'm now at Misericordia meeting students that like I still very much love to talk to, still have a great relationship with the professors that were in my department at the time. Like the my logo for my current voiceover business was done by one of the guys that used to teach at Misericordia, um, Doug Martin from Turtle Boy Productions. Yo, Doug. Sup, What's Doug? Up? Um, he did my logo. Love him. Worked with a guy named Dan Kimbrough, who you may have had the I know pleasure Dan. of meeting. Yeah. Dan is Dan better dude. be listening. I love Dan. You know, we've had many beers on my back patio. Still like hanging out with him a lot. And I'm like, I kind of want to teach college. What do I need to do this? And Scroy's like, well, you need at least a master's degree. So what do you think the next thing that I did was, Bill? Dave gets a master's degree. I got myself from, a master's degree. From Penn State. From Penn State University. We are. Online campus. Nice. I've spent a total of, I don't know, maybe 10 hours at Penn State, <laughs> but I have a master's degree <laughs> yeah. and I get all the mail from them. Yep. So we are indeed. And um, I, I got my master's, started working at the Scranton Cultural Center. That didn't last very long for reasons that, because I don't want to slander anybody, we will not need to get into here, but I love the Cultural Center still, even though the guy that worked there at the time is not a not, not on my Christmas card list or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, he's on the naughty list. Right. Um, and now I'm I'm trying to figure out what else to do. So this is, 
I mean, we glossed over a lot of things that happened in the meantime, but this is now like 2014. And my wife and I take this incredible European vacation. We go to London, we go to Munich, we go to Rome. We come home and a couple months later, we get the news. The news that every married couple thrives on, right? Yeah. We're going to have a baby. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> God, I really need a job now. Oh my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> Got to bring in some money. Um, and we can spend an entire episode talking about my wife and the incredible things she's done. But yeah, at this and, point, and, and we will in a few minutes because I keep eyeing up these sweets on the table, man. The cookies oh. and the the cupcakes. I'm just gonna like while you're talking. Once we get there, I'm just gonna be eating this stuff. So. And you should, I rightly will. so. It's delicious. Yeah. Um, so she was a rock star throughout my lengthy period of un under and unemployment. But there were a lot of conversations towards the end of that where it's like, so. What's the next job going to be? And like, to my credit, I was earning a master's degree. I was applying for work literally everywhere I could think of. The one thing that I never, ever, ever want to do in my career is like sales. So I was about to apply for a sales job. But then an opening happened at uh, the other radio station in town, one of the other radio stations in town, um, which was Intercom. Now it's Odyssey. And um, I got a job there and it was in their production department. So I'm making, I'm now making radio commercials. They started a station that was very much classic rock driven. So now I get to talk more about, you know, the cars and Ozzy Osbourne and I get to go back in my wheelhouse. And that was fun. It was fun. It wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, but we had our first kid. Katie came out healthy and bouncing and beautiful. So I'm learning how to be a dad. And being at this radio station at the time was a nice transition into I go to work, I do my job, I do my job well, but then I can just leave it behind and I get to come home and help, you know, figure out how to parent with my wife. Yeah, how to be a dad. It's the most of all of the jobs on my lengthy list here. Like I love being a dad most of all. And then eventually we have another son. But in that time that I was at the radio station, I'm like, well, I'm making all these commercials for people. I'm voicing get buy one, get one free for, you know, this pizza place and, and doing car commercials. And I'm like, can I do more of that? So I started doing it on the side. I built a home studio, started reaching out and trying to get a feel for like, if I can voice things for other people, started making side hustle money. You know, here's a credit card payment. Here's you want to buy a new guitar, go buy a new guitar money. And then eventually it really started to snowball in the, oh, wait a minute. Like, I got to tell my tax guy about this now. Like, this isn't just yeah. a couple extra bucks yeah, in my you're PayPal. you're starting to make some money. This is, somebody's going to flag this somewhere. I got to start reporting in money. And then it just kept rolling from there where I started getting a bank account, getting my LLC papers in order, and, and Thack Voice came to life in its own individual thing so this is it people this is this is what we are building up to we've spent the last 25 minutes talking Talk. about my path <laughs> to get to, to where to working from home yeah <laughs> yes you went all yeah. over the world yes you did Cra a bunch yeah. of different crashed things. vans yes. bought cigarettes illegal alien and now what are you doing i talk to myself in my room <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what I did. sorry so t tell me exactly like what is your business what do you do so Thack Voice is a, uh, a voiceover business. So anytime you see a commercial and you don't see the person talking, but you hear a voice, that's a voiceover. In the, a grander sense, the Pixar movies, you know they're cartoons, they can't talk by themselves, they need a voice. I've done a couple of different like short student filmy mental health awareness kind of films, but like anytime you hear a voice, I want that job. If I didn't get the job, I'm upset that I'm not voicing that particular thing that you're listening to. That's my business. Um, there are plenty of voiceover artists all over the world who are very talented, and we are a great community and a great place to collaborate and bounce things off of each other, but I want all of their business too. <laughs> <laughs> Selfishly, I want all of your jobs, but that's what I do. Um, I get scripts from clients all over the world, you know, audiobooks commercials, long form narration. Yeah, so you so you like do like a whole audiobook. Oh like yeah. That's that's got to be a lot of work. It is if you break it up into chunks, it's a lot easier to manage, but um there are people that better at audiobooks than me 
I just do sort of the nonfiction, you know, really not dry material, but like the current audiobook that I'm working on, for instance, is a book called Narcissistic Fathers and How to Deal with Them. So if you're if you're listening to a lot of audiobooks about that, you might have heard my voice somewhere along the way. That's kind of my wheelhouse for audiobooks specifically. But I'll do commercials, you know, relatable guy next door kind of ads. I had a national TV commercial once, which was awesome, and I hope to get more. But yeah, that's so cool. That's that's my current business. So is what so, I do. So the audiobook thing, and this is what I heard, and and maybe you can uh, confirm or deny. Is it true? Like even if like if I wrote a book, right, and it's published, and like I'm like a big deal or yeah. not, whatever. But like for the audio version, is it true that even the author themselves has to audition for their own to read their own book? Is that true? No, that's what I heard. Maybe for some of the bigger publishing houses but, but and like, stuff. But like, why the you know for like that book that you're talking about, like that narcissistic father one? Yeah. Like, like why didn't the author do the voiceover? Because like, like a lot of books, like I, I'm a big like audio book listener, right? Um, and a lot of the books that I've listened to, it's the actual author that I'm listening to read the book right so like why is it like that somebody like you would do it as opposed to the author i think a lot of it has to do with the fact that a lot of authors if you spend your time sitting in front of a keyboard and writing you don't necessarily have a conversational tone of voice your delivery might be dry after about five minutes and again not that i'm the best example of it but but you're a professional i am a professional this is what i do for a living and i've heard people like Let's, let's put it this way. You can go to church. The lectors that are at church are wonderful people. But would you want to spend 10 hours listening to them talk in the manner that they're talking in church? No. Yeah. There, <laughs> yeah. There's an art that goes along with delivery. Um, you know, I spent close to 20 years on the radio. Not great. You know, again... Rocky Roads, broadcasting legend. Prospector, still doing the morning show, Rock 107. Incredible. I'm forgettable. That's fine. But I did spend the better part of a couple of decades working on microphone technique, working on how to communicate, and which lends itself in a kind of a dovetail way into the audiobook landscape, where people do actually respond well to my voice when it's delivering. I'm responding well right now. Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Then you have to edit your own voice. I do that. Well, you do that, again, you do that every I do day. That all, yeah, every you do day. that every day. Yeah, so yeah. Holy it's, shit. It's so not a big deal. Yeah. I've listened to myself for countless hours, and I still like my but you, voice. But you have, a good, you have a good voice. Well, thank you. You do. Yeah, a lot better than mine, I think. You're fine. Am I? People, people get so freaked out when they hear their they own do. recorded voice, and they I don't do. know why. I mean, I'm over it now. Like, but when I first started this thing, yeah. I was like, oh, God, cancel it. But this is how everyone else hears you. True. So just don't think about how you sound. Yeah. Just, you you sound fine. Everyone sounds fine. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm like almost ready to eat these cookies. So how about you start, you tell me what's going on with the with the cookies and the um the the cupcakes from the front porch bake shop here. All right. So can I? I'm seriously gonna eat one. In Mar go go for go it. Ahead. In March of 2020, when the world had uh, heard the word COVID for the very first time. A lot of people just sort of went into their own shell and, well, we're going to binge Netflix and we're going to get around to watching that show that we've always wanted to watch and blah, blah, blah. My wife, type A personality that she is, Dr. Susan Thackra, thank you very much. I love being married to a doctor. It's wonderful. Doctor? Doctor. She's, I'm sorry, she's, sorry for the mouthful. I'm eating the cookie right now. She is a teacher. Um, her doctorate is from Wilkes and Educational Technology, but... Because she's the kind of person that would be so driven to get a doctorate in addition to teaching in a full-time job and all the other things that she did at the time, she, in COVID land, could not just sit and plow through a movie. Like, I picked up the guitar again and started to learn how to play. That was what a lot of people did for COVID. She researched how to form a bakery, and now our kitchen, like, I live in a bake shop that people happen to live in. You know, our kids' toys are in that room. Here's the kitchen. I've got a little corner to myself with my studio, and we've somehow managed to all stay sane, but we run and operate a bakery that's open Saturday mornings on our front porch. It's called the Front Porch Bake Shop. For a reason. People are still surprised when they show up and we're serving them on our front porch. It's in the name, people. 
It's the Front Porch Bake Shop. You're on our front porch. I get this it. is the bakery. Where is this Front Porch Bake Shop? We are located at 61 East 4th Street in Wyoming, Pennsylvania, 18644. If you go to the Front Porch Bake Shop.com, you can find the address and the map there. But yeah, again, solid cookie. The Solid. cookies are all mine. You made these. I'm not going to lie to you. My wife is incredible in many different ways. I am the cookie maker. It is what I do. Okay, you're the cookie guy. Is I'm, that it? Uh, I bake the cupcakes. I bake the cakes. She is much better at me at decorating, coming up with ideas. She's the social media manager aspect of it. Like, there's enough work to go around for two people starting a business. But yeah, that was her COVID project. She had a passion for baking and wanted to start that business. And I got roped along, which I'm happy to do because, again, lengthy period of unemployment, nothing but supportive. Now it's my turn to get back to <laughs> following her dream. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, so the baking thing really took off. The bake shop is outstanding and it's really starting to come into its own and all of our treats are delicious and we're building up this following and she's done wedding cakes and all sorts of like birthday cakes and I've got pictures that I can show you, you know of just incredible, incredible Pinterest level things that come out of my kitchen. So yeah. yeah, I'll be playing with the kids. We'll do in a jigsaw puzzle on the floor. You know, Susan will come into the room. Hey, look at this. What do you think of this? I'm like, Oh my God, you made a unicorn out of a cake. Like this, this is amazing. <laughs> so she does like those crazy, cra- crazy cakes. We'll yeah, call she, them. She's call them the crazy cakes, crazy cakes, custom cakes, not like the giant four foot cakes, but like incredible works of, of, uh, you know, confectionery art. Can she make me a giant stack of paper cake? I'm sh- absolutely sure that she can. Go to the website, <laughs> put in the information, frontporchbakeshop.com. There it is, people. Uh, by the way, I, I had the sea salt double chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. From yours truly. They will be there every Dave. single week. On Usually I bake them on Fridays. I want to so keep nice I, and fresh. Yeah, I want to keep Saturday. eating it, but I'm going to keep crunching in the microphone. So I'm going to pause on eating that the rest of the cookie. Save I brought many later. cookies for you. You did. Make sure you take some home to your wife. Don't say it. Oh, no. Listen to me very carefully. Oh, take some I'm home to your now. wife. I'm not editing that part out either. <laughs> now, don't worry. I will definitely share this stuff with her because she will very much appreciate it. And then she'll be ordering next week. Does your kid have teeth yet? He has two small front teeth on the bottom. All right. So break up pieces of cookie and give it to him. <laughs> I don't know if he can like eat that yet. Eh, crumbs. <laughs> put, put the crumbs, crumbs, crumbs in okay. yogurt. Okay. And then All spoon right. feed him that. All right. Maybe I'll do that. I need to get these kids hooked on my cookies so that my kids <laughs> get, get, enough, <laughs> get enough money to go to college. There you go. All right. I'll get, I'll get my child hooked on your product. Yes. You're Again, welcome. Bill. You're welcome. I will be happy to take more of your money. Okay. I'm not above that. Yeah, good. I'm, I'm happy to give <laughs> you give you all my money. <laughs> here's my editing services. Here are my cookies. Now give me Yes, money. here's my firstborn. <laughs> I don't... No, no, no. I don't want another kid. Oh, okay. Let's okay. settle down. I was coming to drop him off on the porch. You do not want another kid. Both of mine are perfect and we are done. Okay. That's it. Done. Done. You have one child. Mm-hmm. Be grateful yeah, that that child is happy and healthy. If you have two children, you will know that world is done for you for That's a while. It. It's over. Yeah. It's already over. But it's good, though. Again, one child is hard. I'm not downplaying any people that have one child. Two children is exponentially harder, and I don't understand why that is. Like level 10. Yeah. What's going on? Well, I don't understand why they can't feed, dress, and do all of these things while their mom and I are both working four jobs. Yeah, right. That's right. Kids. Come right. on, come on, get your, get your shit together. We've got a bake shop to do. I've got <laughs> yeah. editing to do. I yeah. got an audio book due in about forty five minutes. Plus my please? show. Plus my show. Right. <laughs> you know. Come on. Jeez. Thought I raised you to be self sufficient. Yeah. Seven and four year old. Yeah. Get t- with it. Tell those kids to get get, <laughs> get their shit together. Oh my god. All right. So, so what else? I feel like this has been a whirlwind half hour of like me just going through my career. It is, but but at the same again, time, I think it has a theme of reinventing yourself. Yes. Which that's, you, you kind of mentioned to me before coming on today. And I think I think that's a kind of a just a I think it's an important topic of discussion, I'll call it, because like especially nowadays. Oh, yeah. Like I'll, I'll be invited in to do like guest lectures. A couple of my friends are, you know, professors at King's or professors at Misericordia or whatever. I've spoken to students at the University of Scranton about my career in general, but like, you know, the media world, the communications world. And the number one thing that I want them to know is that like. You can't just do one thing in 2022. You work on your regular job. 
you do a podcast on the side. In addition to the podcast work, you had to teach yourself how to do social media. You had to teach yourself really how to delve deep into bookkeeping, sourcing, graphic work. Like That's just a natural progression of the way that things are going now. It used to be you could just get hired at a TV station and just be the reporter and go out and collect a story and then turn it in and your job is done. Well, now you can't do that. You got to know how to work the camera. You have to know how to do your own social media, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So like anytime I get the chance to talk to anybody, my career starts to make a lot more sense when you realize that my number one wish for everyone out there is to be as flexible as possible, to be as well-versed as possible, to do as many things as possible. So now that I've done all of these things and will continue to add to that list, like it's a fun life. It's very cool that I get to say that I've done X, Y, and Z, and I want to try to do, you know, A, B, and, and X. It's, I want to do more. I, I hope and wish that everyone has those same opportunities. Yeah. So like, what is your, um, say like a, a dream job, not a dream job, but like a, a dream, like voiceover gig. What is it? I want desperately somehow to be the voice in a Pixar movie. Okay. I, I don't know about you, but I get emotionally demolished specifically by Pixar movies. And this was before I even had kids. All right. Which ones? Which ones? Well, on my plane ride back from England, I laughed like a jackass to the point where people were looking at me funny over Finding Nemo. (laughs) Again, Finding Nemo. Not exactly the single greatest movie of all time, but for whatever reason, that resonated in my mind of hysterical in that moment. The first... 10, 15 minutes of up, I would rank as like the best piece of cinema ever. Like if I'm putting together a list, I'm starting there. Ever. You can keep Citizen Kane. You can keep Casablanca. They're great. That demolished me emotionally. Like the first time I watched Coco, I was sitting there with my daughter on the couch and I'm like, I I can't handle this. So if I'm inspired to that level of emotion... Like, those people are wizards with what they can do in the cinematic world, and I would love to be even a small part of that. That's cool. So I don't, I can't move out to L.A. We've got a bakery to run. But, but you, you, got the, you got the studio in the house. Yeah. If there's a way that I can ever be a part of a Pixar movie, like, that's, like, number one on my list of things that I would love, 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 love to do. So shout out to Pixar. Please listen to the podcast. Yeah, I'm sure that somebody listening knows somebody that works at Pixar. Yeah, I hope so. I bet you. Factvoice.com. Come on. Call me up. Yeah, he'll take he'll take your money. It can be a bit part, but I will be pleased to take your money. (laughs) Yeah. All right. What else? What's what's the future look like for uh, the front porch bake shop for you? What else? Again, it's more of the same. It's rinse, repeat for me in the voiceover world. I'll record commercials. I'll record audiobooks. I will continue to put out what I think are good, you know, solid recordings and presentations for people. The bake shop will continue to grow and expand to the point where it overtakes everything else in the universe in the house which is fine i'm pretty sure that i i've breathed in you know five pounds of confectionery sugar have you my lungs are just full of it now, (laughs) which is fine i'm healthy it's let's not throw that word around like it's (laughs) my waistline is not at all helped by the fact that we have a full bakery in my kitchen that i have to walk through every single day but my cookies are delicious they are good. So yeah, me and my wife are going to continue to hopefully be good parents to our kids, hopefully uh, to continue to develop our own businesses, and maybe somewhere along the line we'll find, you know, two hours to go out to dinner together. Yeah. That'd be nice. That'd be cool. That'd be very cool. Yeah. And again, if anyone is listening, shout out to the other podcasts listening. Check oh, out. Yeah, yeah. I'll edit your podcast too. Yeah. That's fine. He'll take your money. Gladly. But he does a really good job. Not like I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm being serious. Like all jokes aside... Um, you do a great job. I like working you. with you and, uh, it's fun. You make it fun. Like everything. I try to do that part with a heavy dose of customer service. I don't even know how you deal with me though, by the way, that's like a whole nother, <laughs> that's like a whole nother thing. That, that's actually probably like the number one reason why you're the best because you deal with me. You, I don't know if I should say this out loud because it's probably bad in the Uh-oh. grand scheme of things, but <laughs> you are, you're my bourbon budget is what you are. All right. Like, I don't want to dip into the family joint checking account yeah. to go to the, the state store and buy yeah, yeah. some bourbon. Okay. Like, that's, that's, that's daddy money. That's bourbon money. That's right. buy a new guitar money. That's okay. what that is. Cool. Well, I'm glad to, I'm glad to assist. 
So, yeah. Yeah, so shout out to the other podcasts, and if you're looking for a guy... But seriously, if you need an editor for your podcast, if you need a voice for your commercial, if you need a voice for a long-form narration or an e-learning course... Or a cookie. Or a cookie. It doesn't have to be me, but just, I'd like a shot, you know? Yeah. I don't expect you to hire me right away or for my demos. It would be nice. Uh, Just give me a shot, you know? Yeah. Love it. This is cool. I'm glad you came in. Thanks. This is fun talking about my favorite subject matter. Yeah. Me. You. (laughs) (laughs) I get to read everyone else's scripts all the time. I never get to talk about myself. So it was fun to actually do that. Yeah. So thank you for the opportunity. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know what took me so long to have you on here. Maybe I was just making sure you were like the real deal first. All of your other guests are great. You had a Harlem freaking Globetrotter on your podcast. I don't expect to take precedence over Mighty Mia Hopkins, who, by the way, if I had to rank them, she was easily my favorite guest, and that's my favorite episode you've done. Shout out to Mia. Rocky's a close second place. Okay. Amy and Sarah are third. Okay. Everyone else is tied for fourth. Which is <laughs> tied for fourth. All right. Yeah. It's just to not, say it's that not, they're bad. Yeah, it's not yeah. last. It's right. just tied for fourth. That's correct. Yeah. I like that. All right. So, how can our listeners learn more about Dave and Thack Voice online? You can go to thackvoice.com. That's my voiceover website. It's got links to my demos and some of the work that I've done. You can book me there if you so choose. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, Dave Thackeray. You can find me on Instagram at Dave Thack or Twitter at Thack Thack. Thack Thack. Double Thack. Yeah, I don't know why. I should probably unify those, but no, I like it. Okay, Thack Thack. Yeah. yeah. I try not. I try to post more things other than my Wordle score. So okay, I try to be engaged. Is that like that game that people play now? It's addicting. Yeah, it's I awesome. I haven't. My wife plays it. I don't. You should try. You think? Yeah. Well, you already got me addicted to the cookies. I don't need a second addiction from you. So your wife likes cookies and Wordle. She does. She's good people. She, she is. <laughs> <laughs> Soon to be your cookies. Yeah. Yeah. You're costing me a lot of money. You're welcome. <laughs> Life is too short to hoard it. Come on. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, no, again, this is this is good. I'm, I'm glad I finally got to introduce you to, to my audience, the, the guy that you know works all the magic behind the scenes and makes me sound way better than I actually am in real life. I-R-L, as the kids say. Thanks for the opportunity, and I hope I didn't bore people with my lengthy, twisting journey through career. So before we end, be careful on your way out. Don't scrape the van. All right? (laughs) It's my car now. I'll be more, much more careful with my car. Sure. All right. Dave Thackera, Thack Voice, on the Stacks Podcast in the Blue Door Studio. Thanks for joining me. Thank you.